Comparing GeoServer and ArcGIS Online is a great way to be able to reduce your costs of hosting data. In this example, I'm going to show you how to share a shapefile in GeoServer and then bring it in to ArcGIS Online as an item. Let's get started. The first thing you want to do is share your data in GeoServer. And that's what I've done here. I've shared this Canada layer inside of GeoServer. To share the data in GeoServer, it's really easy. The very first thing is you should have a workspace. The workspace is just a way to, to define and categorize your data. It does require a URL in it, but it's not really used. It's just this name will uh, prepend the data source. So that way you can have your data organized. The next thing you need is the stores. And the stores is a way to connect to your data source. So in this case, what I've done is I've just gone add new store, and you can see there's a shapefile option. In the shapefile option, you can pick that workspace. You can enter your name of the data you want to share. And this, this is the name that's kind of gonna, uh, gonna be published. And then you just simply browse for the data. And I put it right here. There's my shape file. And then you just save or apply. I'm not going to redo it. It's already done once. I already have that, as you can see, right here. The second thing you need to do is once you've published, you need to create a layer associated with it. And that layer will allow different options inside of it. So these, these settings allow you to be able to control what is available. The defaults worked. I didn't have to change anything to make it work inside of uh, ArcGIS Online. So once the data are published, you can give it a test and you can try layer previewing that. And you can see right here. And there's this big long list under the formats. And this is a good way to test to make sure everything's working properly before you even try to do this. I like to use the GeoJSON example, and that just brings this up, and it literally streams it as a GeoJSON. And so this is my Canada data as GeoJSON. That could actually be used in other sources as well if you needed a GeoJSON source. That's how you get it published inside of GeoServer. So now let's switch over to ArcGIS Online and we can take a look at the configuration we need to do there. In ArcGIS Online, the very first thing you want to do is create a new item to point to your GeoServer service. So you bring up my content and content, and then you're just going to create a new item, and you're going to use the URL option. Now in the URL, you're going to paste the URL that you grabbed from GeoServer. And I'm going to use the option from the GeoJSON, copy that, go back to here, and I will paste it. And this automatically does figure out what's there. Even though it's trying to stream it as GeoJSON, it's smart enough to grab the WFS type. And there's, there's lots of types that are listed here, and you can see the different types. WFS means that the geometries will be streamed. So the X's and Y's, points, polygons will actually get streamed. This has the most options inside of ArcGIS Online because you can actually change the cartography associated with each individual feature as it's being displayed. WMS streams it as an image, so like a PNG or a JPEG. So the cartography is established on our, in GeoServer based on your GeoServer settings, and then ArcGIS Online just displays that. So there's no, uh, it, there's not a lot of settings associated with WMS, so it's uh, not as good a, or as a robust as an option. WMTS is a web map tile service, so this is a cached map. So the individual uh, features are all stored into tiles of a certain size that are JPEG or PNGs, and those are streamed over the, the system. So they have to be pre-generated on the GeoServer environment before this would work. It does have a lot of benefits for speed, but you have to do all that pre-generation and the cartography then comes from GeoServer. So those are the, the three main options that would work with this that I would recommend. Then you just hit next. If I click next, it shows me which layers are 
published and available, and I only have one at this point. And then I can just set up the normal item information as I'd like it. And you can add the tags, example, and then you can put whatever you'd like as the summary. This is just the normal ArcGIS online stuff. Then when you save that, what it does is it adds an item to ArcGIS online, and that item points at the geo server. So this is the typical item page. You notice there's no data tab up here like you would see with a hosted feature layer inside of the Esri environment. This is not Esri, this is uh, geo server, which is open sourced and free. And, but the URL down here, you can see it actually points to the URL that I want. And if I go view on that, this URL is that you just opened is what's called the get capabilities of a WMS or OGC. So in the OGC world for WMS, WFS, WMTS, what it does is it uses this get capabilities to just ask the server, hey, what's available here? And that's what is stored inside of ArcGIS online as the URL. So you could actually take this URL and use it in other software like ArcGIS Pro or QGIS to be able to open up that same layer and any other layers that are published against this. And you'll notice inside the URL, it contains the actual name that I used to be able to categorize my data. So that's how that, uh, that gets used. And that's why there is only the one layer that's actually listed within it. So this is what's actually being selected by ArcGIS online, it's being accessed, and then from in here, this item stored in ArcGIS Online, its job basically is just to point at the get capabilities and tell it what layers were selected. So it doesn't actually show the layer that is selected in this, as you can see. But you can see that if you just open it up in the map viewer. So if we click on the map viewer, it would open in that. And there's my map. And at this point, it's a normal layer to ArcGIS Online. You can't edit it, but you can actually do normal identify in it. It will show you the attributes. You can even change the symbology on it to be able to make it the way you'd like. So in here, I can select, for example, the field. Let's pick the name. And now it's showing me all of the provinces in their color. So you have a lot of capabilities here and the the data at this point is actually stored on your geo server because that's where it's shared from. So you don't actually have to pay for the hosting inside of the ArcGIS online environment. So if you have a lot of data you want to publish and you don't want to invest in an ArcGIS enterprise environment, this is an option and geo servers for free. You just need to have a place to put that Geo server, install it on a server that is web accessible. When you share your data, you need to make it public to bring it into ArcGIS Online. And then you can have your application streaming your data from your Geo server on your server. And ArcGIS Online is providing the capabilities. So hopefully that gives you a little trick to be able to reduce some of your costs and share data in a different way. Thank you.